So when I got up today, I thought I was going to be talking about something different in this video. And then I was just checking the news, making sure I was doing my due diligence, and I saw this. Um, Putin's going to be very happy about this. So breaking middle finger to NATO and USA in Slovakia, the anti-American, uh, Western, and pro-Russian Direction Social Demo Democracy Party in Slovakia, which is led by former Prime Minister Robert Fico, has won the parliamentary election in the country. Fico has made it clear... Uh, throughout the election that his first action in office will be the immediate halt of additional military aid to Ukraine. This will happen in all future elections across 90% of Europe. The enemy of Europe is the U.S., not Russia. It is the U.S. that is pushing Europe into an economic crisis. And the days of their vassal governments are numbered. Stop the war, restart the cooperation. Okay, so we're Slovakia and let's tell the story. Slovakia is right here. It's right on the border of the westernmost part of Ukraine. It's right next to Hungary. Hungary and Slovakia are now on the same page. Politically, uh, Orban and Hungary has been making these kind of claims for a while. And it is quite possible that this could happen to Poland as well. It depends on how the elections go in Poland. So let's chase down some of what's happened in this story. Populist, now I stress the term populist here. And because populists don't see this the same way as conservatives or liberals or, or others. And there's a difference between populists in Slovakia and populists in the United States. In the U.S., our populists tend to be associated with right wing. This guy is left wing populist, but still populist. Fico and the leftist Smear Party leading with 22% of the vote. Uh, liberal uh, pro-Western newcomer party, Progressive Slovakia, came in a distant second with 17.9% of the vote. Okay, so that's what's happened here. Let's look at this in Reuters. That was in Radio for Europe. With 99.98% of voting districts reporting in the Saturday election, FICO's Smur SSD party scored nearly 23% of the vote followed by almost 18% for a progressive, uh, progressive Slovenia uh, PS party. Okay. Government led by FICO and his Smur SSD party would see NATO member Slovakia joining Hungary in challenging the European Union's consensus on support for Ukraine. Uh-oh. Now, this is going to make Vladimir Putin very happy, uh, and you'll be able to see that in the way that... Um, no, part of what I also did was go and look at RT and see what they were saying because you get a good sense of what's going on by reading Western news and then getting a sense of what how Moscow is interpreting it. And you'll see this in just a moment. Spur is in need of coalition partners to rule. Sets up third place moderate leftist HLAS voice that party as kingmaker. So here's the story. Um, so I'm speaking to a 40% American audience, and then the rest, the next like 30% is Canadian, British, Australian, other English speaking that has parliamentary kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm trying to explain this to the coalition that doesn't understand parliaments. And if you do understand parliaments and I get it wrong, please correct me. So in America, we have essentially the Republicans or the Democrats. Nobody really else has a chance because the larger the party, the big, better the mechanism to try to get things in. You don't always get everything that you want, but you basically get uh, the guy you want, with the exception of perhaps this year, because the Republican Party is split in a very weird way on Ukraine where usually they kind of stand united. And then you win the general election and that party is in power. In Europe, it's very different. In Europe, it's like the primary is the general election. It's like swapped. It's, it's the opposite, where in the American system, you get to be in power because the, the real action is in the primary. And then you can decide if you're going to be this way or that way. And let's use uh, conservatives as an example. You could have a libertarian or you can have a populist or you can have a real conservative. And that person, whoever wins in the primary, gets put up for the general election against the person in the other party. And then the result is clear. 
Um, so the action is in the primary in the United States. It doesn't doesn't look like that because you still have the general election to clear, but that's how it is. Uh, over in Europe, um, you can vote for any one of these guys, and then they get the percentage from their party, and then they have to form a coalition government. And so he, he this guy, uh, Fico from Smur, has won 23 or so percent of the vote. It's a leading party. Now he has to figure out with the other p smaller parties behind him, like how many of them he can get along with in order to form a majority. Okay, if you're from Europe, tell me if I got that wrong. Okay, seven factions cross the threshold to sit in the next parliament. Smur SSD is expected to be given the first chance to form a government, and it's likely to turn to the nationalist pro-Russian Slovak National Party and HLAS to gain a majority. So if they can form enough of a majority, they can be the ruling power. HLAS has not made Ukraine a campaign issue with Pellegrini saying during a campaign that ammunition supplies were good for Slovakia's defense industry. Its uh, party program has also backed having a united EU against Russia's invasion of Ukraine. So these could be the, the ones that foil this. But I don't know how likely that is because I just can't see that. A FICO-led government would signal further shift in Europe against political liberalism. So they're kind of going against what... Okay, so I've said this before, but it's worth repeating. What Ukraine really needs is the support of their backers because they're like a public corporation. Russia is like a sole proprietor. They can do whatever they want and they don't have to report to anyone. Ukraine is like a public corporation that has shareholders and it's not it's not really they're their own entity but because they are so dependent on western backers they have to make sure they're not displeasing uh, the EU and the UK and the United States and Canada and other and Japan and Korea right now I've talked about this before in uh, in you know in terms of how they have to get um, some action they have to make some progress they have to show that they're they're doing something in a counteroffensive to keep their partners together well politically they could be losing a partner and that fracturing of that relationship is going to be bad for business if I can extend the metaphor okay so Fico is uh, close to Hungary's leader Viktor Orban that's not going to be good this is what it looks like. Uh, the Fico, the Smur party has won the majority. That's 22. It sounds so weird to say the majority to, to my American ears when you have only 22 percent. Um, and so now they have to figure out which of these they can cobble together in order to make uh, a majority so they can govern. OK, let's keep going. Let's look at Wikipedia and talk about direction, social dem democracy. That's the Smear Party, also commonly referred to as Smear, is a social democratic and left wing populist party. OK, uh, it's a political ideology that combines left wing politics with populist rhetoric and themes. Its rhetoric often, often consists of anti elitism, opposition to the establishment, and speaking for the common people, recurring themes in left wing populists. Okay. Led by the former Prime Minister Robert Fico, it also claimed to represent social democracy with Slovak national uh, specifics. Founded by Fico in 1999, it was a split from the post-communist party of the democratic left. Right. So wrap your mind around this. This is a party that is, it's like Bernie's party. In, in It's not exactly the same, you can't say that, but it's like Bernie's faction but in Slovakia, okay? Um, the found, Originally named Direction, uh, the, fa the party was founded on 8 November 1999, emerging as a breakaway from the post-communist party of the democratic left, the successor of the original communist party of Slovakia. Now, they have some conservative views about some things, but here we're gonna also going to look at foreign policy because this is what's important here. Smart claims to support Slovakia's membership in the European Union and NATO, but it's often accused of holding Rusophilic 
and Eurosceptic uh, skeptic stances on foreign policy. The party's expression of strong anti-Western, especially anti-American sentiment, often distancing itself from Western narratives. Regarding the Russo-Ukrainian war, Smur calls for an end to military aid to Ukraine, as well as sanctions against Russia. It interprets Russian invasion of Ukraine as a proxy war between the U.S. and Russia, with the latter deal dealing with threats to its national interests. The party declares that the conflict was provoked in 2014 by, quote, the extermination of citizens of Russian nationality by Ukrainian fascists, unquote, which means that they are swallowing the Russian line, hook, line, and sinker. Okay, that, I mean, that's, that's really what's going on. Okay, a little bit more from the BBC, Slovakia wins the elections. Uh, Smurs pledge an immediate end to military support for Ukraine. Mr. Fico was forced to step down as prime minister. Following the murder of an investigative journalist in 2018, he'll be expected to start coalition talks forming the next government. And he brushes aside the label pro-Russian politician, but this will result in a celebrated uh, this result will be celebrated in Moscow and met with alarm in Brussels and Washington. And again, remember, he's right. Slovakia is right here. Ukraine is right here. Hungary, who also is on the border of Ukraine, is really the gadfly so far. And this could happen to Poland. Let's see how it's being celebrated. On well, they they're not overly celebrating here, but they are very happy that it's happened and explaining what's going on reasonably dispassionately until you get to the end. So let's listen to this. Slovakia may be headed in a new direction as voting has finished in the country's parliamentary elections with results that may bring a new party to power. All right, let's get more details now and cross live to RT correspondent Charlotte Dubensky in Bratislava. Okay, let's and, uh, Charlotte, see how this all plays out. about the preliminary results and the potential ramifications of the vote? Yeah. Well, the vote is pretty much finished in terms of counting. We're just wishing, waiting for the official results to come in, but it's been pretty certain that the winner of uh, Saturday's election in Slovakia is Robert Fico's smear party coming in at just under 23% of the election. Uh, behind them was Progressive Slovakia. They had around 18% of the vote. And then behind that in third place was Halas with around 15% of the vote. It was uh, a 68% turnout, so quite a high turnout in Slovakia. And we know that the ramifications of this election could be massive, particularly in Europe. Now, uh, Robert Fico's party have campaigned on a more pro-Russian platform. They've talked about the fact that they won't arm Ukraine anymore if they go into government. Uh, they've talked about there being issues with the sanctions against Russia, as in they are illogical and having an impact on countries itself here in Slovakia with inflation being high and that is something that really has concerned Brussels who's been watching this election okay so far everything that she said is true as far as I can detect like from what I've read in other sources that those are the issues and it is concerning Brussels very very closely and be wanting to see now if Robert Fico can create a coalition and go into government and put into action all that he said he would do on the campaign trail. Now, on the other side, Progressive Slovakia had campaigned to continue armaments to Ukraine to keep the status quo, and it's seen as a, a very pro-Brussels, pro-NATO party. Now, its leader has conceded that it didn't win the election, but says it's still open to forming its own coalition. Nonetheless, the fact of the matter is that uh, Smer is the winner. And we, of course, respect that, although we think it's bad news for the country. And it will be even worse news if uh, Mr. Fiso forms a government. Um, therefore, I will be in touch with other political leaders whose parties were elected to parliament on an informal basis to discuss ways of, ways of preventing that. Well, the normal due process would be the party with the largest share of the votes gets the chance to try and form a coalition first, and that is Robert Fico's smear party. And there are plenty of parties who won enough seats to possibly support him in creating that coalition, certainly parties that have uh, similar viewpoints on uh, those major issues that I just mentioned.
Charlotte, what can you tell us about the general feeling among the Slovak people? Look, this has been a massively polarized election and what the view is here perhaps in Bratislava is different to what you'd hear in other parts of the country. Lots of the people we spoke to here in Bratislava said they were very much for the progressive Slovakia party, uh, seeing their future being with the West, being with Europe, but elsewhere in the country that's not necessarily the case. And it seems to be that there is a big division on all of the major issues, whether that is uh, LGBT rights, whether that's to do with migration coming into the country and really one of the hottest topics in this election wasn't even domestic it was about what's happening in Ukraine a neighboring country with many people really feeling a sense of apathy now towards what the previous government and what Europe has done in terms of the last year so I can't tell whether that's accurate or not. I can't tell the intensity. Of course, RT wants to build that up. But what is the real intensity of how much they want to support Ukraine or not? I, I, I just can't see it. I'm, I'm somewhat blind to that. I will vote for a party that is for peace, that supports solving things in other ways than by senselessly sending weapons. Changing of the incumbent government is of most importance to me. I was very dissatisfied with it because I felt the impact of sanctions on the people and don't agree with this government's policy. In general, the work of the Slovak Republic's government is terrible. The war in Ukraine certainly didn't help us or the whole of Europe, and the sanctions against Russia are absolutely useless and totally disastrous for Europe. Now, if and, and of course they want to show you these people with these sentiments because this is RT. So, uh, you know, there's no surprise there. I just don't know how, how intense Slovakians see this. For a cynic, you could say, oh, that's just a few voices, but really it's not. If we look at the surveys over the last few years, there has been a sea change in the way that Slovakians view what's happening in Ukraine. A recent survey showed that 51% of respondents, so a majority uh, of those who responded to a survey, said that they thought the war was the result of either the policy by the West or down to Ukraine itself. And there really is a disenchantment with what the European policy has been in terms of arming Ukraine in the past year. Now, if you look at those parties who campaigned on a more pro-Russian platform saying they don't want to arm Ukraine, uh, they could take around 92 votes in uh, 92 seats in the parliament. And if they form a coalition, that could be a pretty strong one. All right, Charlotte. OK, so the real issue here is to see if this is the first domino or if this is an outlier because again hungary has already been kind of leaning away the gadfly but now this coalition will strengthen and it'll be really interesting to see what happens in poland in just a few weeks okay i could very well have gotten this wrong with my interpretation because i'm an outsider looking in i don't claim any expertise on slovakian politics but I do know that this could be very bad for Ukraine. Um, so please correct me if I'm wrong. Put it in the comments below. I'm more than happy to stand corrected. Thank you for your time. The likes, the shares, the subscribes, and the coffees. And thank you for caring about Ukraine.